Thank you. Activate clicker. Fantastic. Social entrepreneurs. Social entrepreneurs don't give a man a fish, because that just feeds him for one day. Social entrepreneurs don't teach that man to fish, because that only feeds him for a lifetime. Instead, social entrepreneurs do something different. They sit down with that man, and they listen to his story. They try to understand his pain, his hunger. Where did it come from? Why is it there? What has he done in the past that to help that? And where does he want to be? Who is he as a person? And then that social entrepreneur will get to know that man's friends, get to know his, his family and his colleagues, his, his network, his community. And he start to ask them, are you hungry too? What kind of pain do you have? Do you share the same pain? Is it different? How is it different? How do you relate to this man over here? Are you connected? An entrepreneur starts to think, a social entrepreneur starts to think from a community point of view, not on an individual level, starts to think about not just that man and his friends and family and colleagues, but the entire society, the, the culture, the country, the entire world and how it all relates. Starts to put that man's individual pain in context with the entire community. Did the community create that pain or is that individual man's pain creating the problems in the community? Social entrepreneurs recognise social problems on a, on a social-wide level. This is very important. But they don't just stop there. Social entrepreneurs want to make positive social change, change on a big level, not just solving that man's pain. They want to solve that problem for the entire community. And they do this in a way that not just going to help that community. They, they create a a system which can then be shared with other communities. So a social entrepreneur wouldn't teach a man to fish. He'd, he'd create maybe a, an education program or a training system that teaches men to fish. And what he'd do is he'd, I guess, contact community leaders and role models within that man's community and, and teach them how to teach the system so that these role models would then teach that man how to fish. And that man would be inspired and enabled to be able to teach his kids and his friends and his family and his colleagues and, and his community how to fish. So now there's social entrepreneurs, not just taught one person, he's taught an entire community. And not just that community, and not just in that generation, but different communities, similar communities all around the world, inspired by this change, by this new, new people actually eating and, and enjoying their life. Not just this generation, but other generations too. A social entrepreneur wants to destroy the status quo because they're not happy seeing that pain, of course, with love. A social entrepreneur won't stop until he's completely revolutionised the fishing industry, leaving the world a better place, a positive change. And think, the thing is, though, the key thing is, that, that training system is socially responsible, it's cost-effective, it's smart, it's creative, but it's also profitable. It's very important. It's also profitable. So not only is it changing and creating positive change in the world, it's putting positive change in his pocket, and, and he deserves that, doesn't he? And that's what a social entrepreneur is. So I've, I've had the privilege of meeting a few of you in the break, and I, I really admire the, the people in this room. The fact that you're sitting here tells me that you're very driven, you're motivated, you want to learn, you want to grow. You, ha you may have business goals, professional goals, and that's great. You know, expansion plans, sales target, revenue targets, that's fantastic. But I also get the feeling that uh, a lot of you know that there's something more. Um, something else maybe at the end of the week, to, do, you, do you ever ask yourself, is this all there is? You know, is this what I was put here on this earth to do? Do you ever ask, what's my gift? How am I, how am I going to share it? Who am I going to share it with? And how can I share it more? I sometimes ask myself, how do I want to be remembered? Do you ever ask yourself that? What's the legacy you want to create? And th these are the questions that a social entrepreneur asks. Maybe, maybe you've been inspired by a, a celebrity or um, you know, 
a success story of social entrepreneurship, admired what they've done, and said, I want to be that person too. If you have, good on you, good on you, absolutely. But what happens more often than not is, you know, come Monday, you've got bills to pay, appointments to make, you've got, you know, family to raise, and you've got those business goals, and in the end, you say, oh, a little bit later, when, you know, when I'm rich and famous, like, like that person I saw on the TV, I'll, that's when I'll give back, that's when I'll share my gift. And you convince yourself that, oh, well, in the end, uh, I'm, not, I'm not someone to be able to, you know, prevent AIDS or change world hunger or poverty, or I'm not interested in green issues or, you know, recycling and animal, animal rights, so social entrepreneurship is not for me anyway. So you go about your work week and you reach Friday again and you're still left with those same questions, aren't you? So if that's you, if this sounds kind of familiar, I know I've been there. I guess I have a message for you. It's a simple message. It's a, it's a philosophy I've kind of termed good catalyst, but really it's social entrepreneurship. I just want to ask you a question. Um, what if you could take your existing job or your existing business? You don't need to change anything. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. What if you could take that existing job and infuse into it some of the, just, just some of the principles of social entrepreneurship? You don't need to change what you do, what you sell, how you work, where you work. Just think about the attitudes. Adopt some of the philosophies and the strategies of social entrepreneurship. How could that, how could that change your job? How could having now what's what's called a, a double bottom line, a, both a profit kind of economic bottom line, but also a social bottom line. What, what change are you creating? What would having a social mission, a, an agenda, a goal, a, something that, that really drives you, what would that do? I'd say that you'd probably come Monday, say, fantastic. You wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't be denying your values, your passion. You'd be, you'd have your heart in what you do. And you know what, that's contagious, that's absolutely contagious because now your staff, the people you're working with or your colleagues, they're going to feel that too. They're going to, you know, a lot of them will be aligned with that social message, that social agenda that you have. They're going to give more, they're going to be more, be part of the team and create something more. And then your customers, your customers might start to realise that uh, they too want to be, you know, not just paying X but paying 2X because they, they want to support this initiative, they want to be part of it, they're going to become fans and, and just promote everything you do, be your own marketing team out there working for you, just because of the social mission, because you're doing something extra, not different. I believe in uh, the concept of paying it forward and, and karma and that kind of thing in an in, in economic sense, because really, we're all here together, we're all here together, and if we can create a better world, then isn't that going to help you too? So what if you could meet those business goals or those professional goals faster and easier? And what if you could make bigger goals? What if you could enjoy the outcome at the end? The more you help other people. So the more you help other people, the easier it gets to be able to, you know, it works on both sides. What if that was true? What if infusing some of the, the attitudes of social entrepreneurship could actually get you where you want to go? It's not one or the other, it's actually, that's the way. It's just a proposition, but if that was true, I'd certainly want to learn a little bit more. So I'm going to share with you today some of the, I guess, give you a quick overview of, of just some of the ideas of social entrepreneurship. And you, I really encourage you to, uh, to learn more. There's so many inspiring people out there, some great TED Talks as well that can fill in the gaps, but I just want to give you a taste and share some of my examples and, and how it's uh, driven me. So some amazing experts in the room on, on mindset and motivation, so really this is just my quick little take on it. The first step of infusing some social entrepreneurship into your life, whether it's a job or a business, is mindset. And it's a change of mindset. It's change and change is scary and that means you have to take a leap of faith every so often. Some of the things I'm going to be sharing are actually very counterintuitive in terms of, in terms of business. I mean, all the business people will be, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that. No. Um, I've had a lot of fun trying to break the rules. That's, that's who I am. I'm, I'm not someone who will break a school rule. I'll, I'll try to reinvent business rules. Uh, and that does take a leap of faith. 
For me, I often ask myself, what drives me? What gets me out of bed and what keeps me up? I, I try to get rid of the keeping me up part, though. <laughs> really, if you ask the right question, you really know what your priorities are. And not just your work priorities, not just your business goals. These are things, things that you would do on the weekend, things that you would do after work, things that you would cram in before work. If you really know what drives you, you can have unstoppable passion. And wouldn't that be a powerful tool in your business, in your work day? Unstoppable. So once you know what that mission is, what that agenda is, what that thing that drives you is, take that and times it by seven. Aim higher, aim bigger, go bigger. Because if you actually get that, which you will, you want that to be life-changing, not just for you, but for a lot of people. But on the other hand, you've got to keep it realistic. Um, social entrepreneurs, in the end, they're about change, right? Uh, they're not just about dreaming. They're a visionary in the sense that they can look forward into the future and, and understand what is possible and create that. But they are about creating and making it real. So they have to be a realist as well. So maybe take that goal, multiply it by seven, divide it by two for the start. Make that win and then multiply it by two again and go from there. One of the biggest challenges I've, I've experienced with uh, coaching and mentoring people in, in social entrepreneurship and, and bringing that in is uh, it means that you have to measure success differently. And this is, this is something that's a little bit strange. You have to really question, what is success to me? And it might mean seeing a smile on, on a child's face in, in an orphanage you're working with, or it may be as simple as a client saying, wow, what you, what you shared with me, what, what you helped me with, really helped me and, and my brother too, because I, I passed on that message and it really made a difference too. Maybe that's, all, that's what success means to you, making a social change on that level. And that's great. So one of the, uh, the projects I started when I was 17, I was um, very fascinated by the share market, fascinated by... Uh, the share market in terms of an organism that had living, breathing emotions. And I would talk to a lot of people by email about this. And I learned that uh, investors and, and traders actually, they're often quite lonely. It's often uh, they're at home trading alone or they, don't, they can't talk about this with their friends and family because they're not interested in the share market. So I found that these people love having that sense of community, that sense of camaraderie. And that was really a, a strong pain, not having that. So I took my friends that I was talking uh, to just, just about economics and so on and, and brought them together in one website, one place. And they met other people and they instantly got a hit, got this buzz by not just talking with me and kind of me passing on messages and so on. They could see the entire thing happening right in front of them. They could make, make connections, understand that. Small social need, but a very important one for them. Uh, I was actually procrastinating for my year 12 exams, to tell the truth, but uh, it... it it was an amazing experience seeing in one month 700 people join that site because that need that I hit with those few you know, 10 or so friends hit their friends, hit their friends, hit their friends. Within one month, you know, amazing results. And it's grown to over 20,000 members now. I've learned in that experience uh, of running and, and growing online communities since then, it's all about leading as a social entrepreneur. It's about inspiring other people to be able to make that change and really to, to set the culture and let the culture take care of itself. And this is actually quite liberating. It's actually fantastic to see other people uh, adopting you know, your vision and aligning and saying, absolutely, I'm on board. It means that you're, you're less in the details, and that's something that's actually quite, quite fun. Another project I, I played around with, um, mentioned before, I ran a, a web programming and internet marketing firm called Zentec Web. One of the things I really wanted to do is uh, have a research and development think tank. This is you know, my little creative mind. We called it Zen Labs. So we wanted to embrace the social entrepreneurial principles of, of creativity, of that kind of mash-up nature of being brave, being ingenuitive, and, and breaking patterns. So we did that with this research and development lab. We, we decided not to hire and work, work with people locally. We, we went out overseas. We, we got to know people and programmers on a very individual level, uh, and we were looking for someone very special. People who saw our vision of wanting to create technology, new technologies that really would change the world. Things like websites that are specifically designed for people vision impaired. And people who were willing to share that code and that programming with other people open source so that that could be redeveloped and, and grown. So I asked for help. I asked for support. 
And initially, this was a volunteer job. Imagine people giving 20 hours a week for free. These are top people. We ended up having 17 people in 11 countries working in Zen Labs. Top people, amazing stuff we were doing. And really, the reason why they were willing to do that is because of the social mission. These people charged good money, but they were willing to donate and support what we were doing because we were creating an environment that nurtured volunteers. So that's very important in social entrepreneurship. We'd like, we made a lot of mistakes. It's a new area, a new part of technology. Um, but we created an environment which the community, both the stakeholders, the creators, even the people experiencing the problem, they could all be part of the solution. That's really important as well, to, to really listen and be open, to be very humble. Because when you're doing things in social entrepreneurship, it's always new, and you, you are going to make mistakes. You are breaking the, the new ground. You're beating the path. A great, great example, you really should look this up, is micro-lending. This is, uh, I mean, the person, uh, Muhammad, who, who developed this, uh, he won a Nobel Peace Prize in 2006 because of this concept. Essentially, what he did is he, he was uh, someone who took the, the existing banking and lending industry, uh, which is generally, you know, could be thought as a money-driven kind of economic greed kind of based area. And he thought, well, I'm going to break free of that. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to try to create change using the same concept, but do it in a different way. He went where the money isn't. He went to the most impoverished people in Bangladesh. And he did something a little bit different. He went where the money isn't, he turned that around by giving very, very small loans. They're talking $20, $30. Something which would be enough for a cow and a few chickens, for, for someone to create a little business of their own. And he actually did something a little bit different as well. He created financial st sustainability in that community because there was a community of, of people who were all reliant on each other to make sure that each other paid back that loan. Community loan working together. And he also did something a little bit different about customer demographics. He, he actually loaned primarily to women. And he found that this had amazing results for the community. So social entrepreneurs, you, you can be in an area which is driven by money, but you can still make incredible change. But also keep in mind that you have to make a living yourself. You can't just be uh, you know, relying on the occasional government grants and you know, donations and, and volunteering yourself, you know, trying to fit it in with your paying job. You've got to be able to make your own business profitable yourself and make a change at the same time. The more profit you make, the more change you make. That's how to do it. And this startup club, this is my little my little baby. Um, really, this was about the fact that young business people like me, we get really bored going to suit and tie, you know, orange juice kind of networking events. Uh, it's, it's not really a lot of fun, you know, networking with people twice your age um, who don't really share much in common. So we decided to think about customer demographics differently. We, we really created business networking specifically for young people to the point where it's actually a little bit strange to be, you know, you know, someone with more than 10 years' experience. We decided to create a culture where the only thing that made sense was to work together in this business community, to collaborate rather than compete. Because really, we're just people like each other, you know, why not, why not work, each, work together? In social entrepreneurship, if you find other businesses and other people doing the same thing, fantastic. Fantastic. They're not competitors. They're collaborators. Find other people who have the same social mission and, and work with them. We did that within the Startup Club in relationship to other networking groups, and we did that within the Startup Club as well. We've run something like 32 free events, including three-day conferences and amazing stuff. But we do, do things differently. When, when, we, when we have a special guest speaker, we'll, we'll put them up in, in some play equipment at a park, and that will be their podium. We'll, We'll, we'll have cupcakes for catering. You know, we'll just screw around and have a lot of fun. So I just want to leave you with one last thing. I don't know if you realize it or not, but you being here means that you are the community leaders. And then that social entrepreneur goes out there and inspires others. He does it not just to be inspired the people he talks to, but to be able to make that change go further. And the way to start with that, start even very, very small, maybe giving half an hour pro bono to, to, to someone, or maybe just thinking, chunking one level up and just thinking from a community point of view. How can you help not just the, the client you're working with or the customer, but how can you help their friends and family and their colleagues and their community? 
But the best way is to start with yourself. Be a role model. Be the proof. Start here, feel it here, and live right. Thank you.